So, okay, uh, just bear in mind that, that Z equals to 1 over uh, R, okay? Yeah, that's the equation variable of Okay, so now we got this lovely equation over here. Uh, hope is lovely, okay? Now, this one can cancel out. We can write this as 3, okay? So now, what, what can we do? Okay, let's divide. Let's keep, we want to keep the, the second derivative by itself, okay? So let's just divide everything by minus H squared Z squared, okay? So that we will isolate the second derivative. Okay, because something will interesting will come up. Okay, so this one will go over here. This one brings up, we got a z over here. Okay, and then equals this one, we will just bring over, cancel, cancel. We got a k over h squared. Okay, I hope that is correct. If my algebra is still fine, and I think that is so. Okay, yeah, that is what we have. Okay, we got this equation over here. So, let's look at it. What is the, the right hand side? The right hand side is a constant. What is z? Z is the variable that is related to this, okay? And what is um, the, the second derivative? Well, that will give me sort of an acceleration, okay? And if you look at it, I'm not sure about you, but if you study simple harmonic motion, this is the equation of simple harmonic motion, right? Yep, it is. Okay, because the displacement, if we, if we leave the constant one side, okay, I need to rearrange it. So I leave the constant one side, I bring the variable over the other side. The acceleration is proportional to displacement, see, z and the second derivative of z with respect to theta. So there's a simple harmonic motion hidden somewhere inside there, and I can just um, bring it up very easily by letting z equals to w plus k over h squared, okay? Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because when I bring this over here, now the k over h squared will cancel, remember? k over h squared is a constant, so I can cancel it out, and then I will get d2w d theta 2, okay, plus w is equals to 0, okay? And then what I can do is that I can just simply apply the, the formula for simple harmonic motion, and then later I will just rearrange it to get z. Oh, I don't even need to rearrange it. I can just simply write z is equals to, now what's the equation, the formula? It's a constant a sine theta plus b cosine theta plus the constant over here, h squared. So this is z. There we go, okay? Almost there, but still not quite. Okay, that's the equation that we have. Okay, so let's just erase this and go back to what we have, the, the, the orientation of the axis, okay? Now, let's take it a look at this, okay? Now, this is quite difficult to understand, so I will try my best. Okay, now remember we're dealing with the motion of the planet small m or the planet Earth that goes around an elliptical orbit, okay? So obviously r is defined as over here. However, the relationship between r and z is over here like that, the substitution that we made to simplify the algebra. Okay, so this is the general solution, all right? It's the general solution because there's an a and there's a b. Now, but we want the particular solution or particular solution, okay? How we're gonna do about that is just, we just let the planet M or the planet Earth, okay, just go to this line over here where theta is equal to zero because it's very easy to identify, you know, when that happens or at least it's very easy to, to make substitutions of certain values where theta is equal to zero and, and that is what we're gonna do, okay? Now, you can also recognize from here it's not that obvious but it should be that R, when theta equals to zero, R takes takes a minimum, okay? R takes a minimum value. Now, when R takes a minimum value, that will mean that by the, by the change of variable, variable that we have made, Z would take a maximum value. One divided by a really small value gives us a bigger value. So, Z takes a maximum value, okay? Okay, just you need to stick with me on this one, okay? So, Z takes a maximum value. So, remember, our particular solution, we are focusing on the point over here when theta is equal to zero. So, when theta is equal to zero, okay, we have dz d theta is equal to zero, okay, because it's the maximum point, but more, I can do one better by saying the second derivative, okay, would be less than one, would be, wait, wait, would be negative, right? Yeah, negative, less than zero, okay? Simple illustration, okay? You see whether you got your second derivatives in check. Okay, z takes a maximum. So basically, we are focusing on this point over here. Now, the, the first derivative needs to go like that, okay? So basically, okay, it can actually go like this or like this, but since it's a maximum value, the first derivative needs to go like that. 
it increases greater than it, it negatives uh, it, for the greater decreases okay but if the first derivative is like that the second derivative is thus like this okay because we need a negative gradient to shoot the line going downwards so this explains why the second derivative is less than zero okay this is what we got so knowing that we have this we can now just simply differentiate this okay and substitute the values of theta inside okay very easy first differ uh the first derivative we got a cosine theta okay then we got a minus b sine theta okay and then the second derivative i'll just do it right away okay we got a minus a sine theta okay minus b cosine theta okay that's fair enough now when theta is zero this one is equals to zero over here cosine is equals to one so basically a is equals to zero okay i'll write it here a is equals to zero okay and then for the second one a is equals to zero so this will be zero so we got a minus b cosine theta theta is equals to zero okay so uh sorry theta is, theta is equals to zero so cosine theta is equals to one okay and then basically this one would be less than zero okay does that make sense so this is equals to this a is zero so this cancels out cosine zero is equals to one so that'll be minus b this one is less than zero so i'll write it like that and now i'll just change the sign and b is more than zero over here like so b is more than zero okay now that is we're almost there so hang in hang uh stay with me okay so this is the particle solution that we got now we can reduce this equation knowing that a is zero z is now equal to b cosine theta plus k over h squared okay but what is z z is one divided by r so what is r r is one divided by z so we can just simply rewrite this as h squared okay h squared b cosine theta plus k so we can take the reciprocal which is what i'm going to do now r is equals to h squared okay then we bring this over down we got k plus h squared b cosine theta okay now we're going to divide by k so it's h squared divided by k on the top this one becomes by one plus h squared squared divided by k okay cosine theta okay now making one last substitution let's or just let e a constant e equals to h squared divided by k and then now our final equation is r is equals to e divided by one plus e cosine theta okay r is equals to this what we needed is r equals to function theta and that is what we got okay finally this is the equation that we have in mind now how good is your conic section mine is not so good okay but anyways if you got this equation over here okay e one plus e cosine sorry cosine theta okay one e divided by one plus e cosine theta this can either be an ellipsis a parabola or a hyperbola okay as r is a conic section that is focused at the origin okay just like the origin is over here it could be an ellipsis a hyperbola or a hyperbola taking from planets taking what we see and taking what we know we can just conclude that it's an ellipsis because if it's a parabola it will shoot out out of its orbit okay if it's a hyperbola it will shoot towards an isotope that doesn't happen the planet sticks around its orbit and so from this equation depending on what e is it can either be one of these three but we can conclude that it is an ellipsis because the planet still stays in its rotation okay and there we go a bit messy okay but basically this is the result we want to have is actually this result over here okay using all substitutions that we know using the change in variable to simplify the algebra using the equation from the previous Kepler's law and using this is starting from the equations of motion Kepler's first law that r is in the polar form e divided by one plus e cosine theta where e is a constant and that gives us an equation of an ellipsis if i'm not wrong that's where e is less than one okay i think that's the key over here so oh that's a that's a tough one but i hope i did uh did justice to the problem okay hope you enjoyed it